the show, I Married Joan, America's favorite comedy show, starring America's queen of comedy, Joan Davis, as Mrs. Joan Stevens. And featuring Jim Backus as Judge Bradley Stevens. Judge, can't we hurry this up? I'm in a hurry to get back to the office. Well, what seems to be the problem? That's the problem. All he cares about is his business. Always got to get back to the office. Getting it back out. You see, Judge, a man works hard. For who? For her. She's always complaining. No matter what I do, she's complaining. If I don't work, she calls me a bum. She's always got to complain. Always something nasty to say. Even when I proposed to her, she said a nasty thing. What was that? Yes. <laughs> now you're sorry you proposed to me. Now? I was even sorry then. Then why did you marry me? Look, Ethel, i just come back from spending four years in the South Pacific. I'd forgotten what a woman looked like. And by the time I remembered, I was married to you. <laughs> please, 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 Mr. and Mrs. Hobson. Even though these are my private chambers, the dignity of the court still holds. Marriage problems are serious things, so let's please try to discuss this problem rationally and uh, calmly. Well, Judge, it was all wrong from the very beginning. I wanted a nice, big, glamorous wedding. He made me elope. I had my bags all packed for honeymoon. He said he had to get back to the office. So what kind of a marriage is it when you don't even have a honeymoon? Well, I appreciate how you feel, Mrs. Hobson, but I think you're exaggerating the importance of a honeymoon. A glamorous wedding and a, and a honeymoon are of great sentimental significance to a bride. But a honeymoon doesn't determine the success of a marriage, not one bit. Pay attention. <laughs> That's what I've been telling you, Judge. As a matter of fact, my wife and I had as miserable a honeymoon as could ruin a marriage. We'd have been better off without one. Well, what do you mean? Well, let me tell you about it. We had gotten married and we checked into this resort hotel. Wasn't it a wonderful wedding? Oh, it was wonderful. Oh, isn't Lucille Reeves beautiful? Who? Lucille Reeves, my maid of honor. Tell you the truth, I didn't notice. You didn't notice her? No. Oh, darling. Wait a minute, honey. Lucille Reeves happens to be one of my nearest and closest friends. You might have at least noticed her. All right, I noticed her. She was gorgeous, she was sensational, she was beautiful. Oh, do you really think so? Well, well yes. You didn't have to notice her that much. Oh, but honey. Don't honey me. If you think Lucille Reeves is so beautiful, why didn't you marry her instead of me? Well, I never saw her until the day of the wedding. Well, you're certainly a fast worker. Now, Joan, you're being utterly ridiculous. Well, if that's what you think of me, I'd better take my bag and go home. Well, that goes for me, too, I'll take it. Darling. Our first class. Oh, honey. I wish you that I never look at Louise again. Lucille. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, who's Louise? Oh, now, Joan. I'm sorry, Dad. <laughs> Where are you going? Well, I'm just going to hang this coat up in the closet. Way over there? <laughs> but it's so far away. Well, honey, it's only 12 feet. I'll miss you. Oh, if I can't come back soon, I'll, I'll write you. <laughs> Brad. Yes? You didn't kiss me goodbye. Well, I just... <laughs> All right, darling. You don't have to knock, dear. I'm dressed. I'm not knocking. I am locked in. Locked in? Oh, oh, yeah. Sorry, not that. Well, never mind. Just open the door and get me out of here. It, it won't open. What do you mean, it won't open? Well, it won't be. It must have a snap lock or something. It, it won't. Well, then call the desk. Oh, yeah. Hello? 
I got a man trapped in my closet in 203. <laughs> no, no, I don't want the house detective. The man's my husband. Send somebody up right away to get him out. <laughs> Thank you. Someone's coming up right away, dear. <laughs> Say, maybe I can open the lock with a bobby pin. What? You know, all the detectives do it. I saw one on television once that opened a lock with a bobby pin. <laughs> yeah, this detective, Big Mike, borrowed a bobby pin from his girlfriend. You see, Big Dutch had locked Big George in this little closet because he had double-crossed Big Sam. But, Jill, are you sure you know what you're doing? <laughs> Don't worry about a thing. You just leave it to Big Joan. <laughs> Whoops. What happened? The bobby pin broke off in the lock. Well, you leave these things alone until the man comes up. Come in. He's locked in this closet here. Oh, well, the key in this closet fits both doors. You see, all our larger suites are equipped with these burglar-proof closets in case guests want to leave fur coats and things like that. How you out in a jiffy, Mr. Stevens? Jiffy. <laughs> It's funny, I can't seem to get the key in. You, you can? No. It's almost like somebody jammed up the keyhole or something. But who would do that? <laughs> who would do that? What's holding you up? Now, will you get me out of here? I can't, Mr. Stevens. The lock's jammed. Oh, no, Johnny. You and your bobby pin. You and your big mic and your big duck. Come to think of it, big mic jammed up the lock, too. I remember now. I'll have to get a handyman up here. The key won't work at all. Well, will it take very long? A uh, handyman will be right out. Good. But I don't know what he's going to do. These closet vaults here are really built. Oh, for heaven's sake, Tom, we're hurry. We could be placed in 22 minutes of our honeymoon already. <laughs> <laughs> Are you all right, darling? Do you still love me? I'm waiting, waiting. Give the poor guy a chance to breathe first. <laughs> yes, Dad. Oh, I miss you. Oh, I miss you, darling. Are you sure you're all right? Sure. Look. Oh. <laughs> Thank heavens, the poor darling hasn't had a bite since breakfast. Your lunch is here, dear. Oh, thank heavens, darling. I'm starved. I know. <laughs> oh. Okay, dear. Remember the way you looked before you looked. Your laughing brown eyes. Your smile. Oh, Jody. Lady, there's only one way to get him out. What's that? We gotta burn him out. Burn him out? I like my husband just the way he is. I don't want him burned out. We're gonna have to get a torch and burn that lock off. Oh, well, how long will that take? I don't know, about seven or eight hours. Seven or eight hours? But our honeymoon will be over by then. <laughs> Is it off, Oh, it's off. Is it the 
any better. <laughs> say it wasn't. Nevertheless, we've had a very happy marriage. Well, maybe you respect your wife a little, but him, all he cares about is his business. You see, Judge, always complaining. Well, if I didn't complain, he'd never even notice me. If you didn't complain, I'd drop dead. Now, he tells me. No, please, 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 Mrs. Hobson. Uh, would you leave me alone with your husband for a few moments? I'd like to give him a few facts of life. With pleasure. It's about time. <laughs> Mr. Hobson, you work in an office. Hey, yes, yes. Why? Why? Money, of course. Well, exactly. Now, that's your incentive. But what incentive is there for a woman to work in the house? Oh, I don't know. Well, there's the satisfaction of a job well done, the appreciation of a husband. But sometimes you have to create an incentive. I know I did it with my own wife. I promised her a diamond bracelet that she'd do the job properly around the house. Diamond bracelet? I couldn't afford that. Well, neither can I. <laughs> look, look, I don't intend giving it to her. No, I used it as a trick to get her in the habit of doing her job without complaining. As a matter of fact, it's been months since I promised her and she never mentioned it. You know, I'll bet she's forgotten all about it. <laughs> today, Betty. Brad will be bringing me home a diamond bracelet tonight. What makes you so sure he'll bring it? Oh, Brad always keeps his promises. And haven't you seen his campaign posters? <laughs> Re-elect Judge Bradley Stevens. Honest Brad always keeps his promises. <laughs> Thanks, Betty. Gee, I can just see myself all dressed up in my diamond bracelet. And say, what goes with diamonds? Usually bankruptcy. <laughs> oh, okay. Honey, a real diamond bracelet costs a fortune. Now, how could Brad save that much money in only six months? Gave up smoking. <laughs> June, that wouldn't even pay the sales tax. Oh, but Betty, after all, Brad doesn't pay the full price. You see, he's a judge. He's got connections. Huh? Yeah, he'll get it wholesale. Save 50 percent. Well, he's a lot of money. Well, and there's no retail sales tax. That's another 3 percent. Yeah, he'll pay cash. That's 10 percent off. And uh, being a judge, he'll get a professional discount, maybe 25 percent. And let me see. Um, oh, yeah, buying direct from the owner. There's no salesman commission. That's at least 12 percent. Hey, wait a minute. According to my figures, that's already 100 percent. He's getting it for nothing. He is. Isn't that wonderful? I think I'll call him right up and tell him he can start smoking again. <laughs> Hello, may I speak to Judge Stevens, please? Oh, he left early? Thank you. You see that, Betty? He left early. He had to stop to pick up the bracelet. Oh, Johnny, how I envy you. Mm -hmm. That tight rod husband of mine. Getting a dollar out of him is like pulling teeth. <laughs> How can you say that? Didn't Henry buy you a beautiful new garbage disposal last month? Sure. Then he suggested I make money by taking in garbage. <laughs> oh, he isn't really that bad. Oh, no? How about the time we all went to Chasen's for dinner? Jody! Anybody home? It's Brad. He's here and he's got the bracelet. I gotta have this place clean as a whistle. Oh, help, kid. <laughs> How's Henry? You mean old tight barb? Wait a minute, what's going on here? Where is it, you sly little weasel? Uh, where is what? 
Isn't that cute? Playing it like a fox. Okay, slip it on. What's she talking about? Don't you know? No. Joan, open your eyes. Dream it over. You mean you haven't got it? Well, I don't know whether I do or not. What am I supposed to have? The diamond bracelet. The six months are up today. Oh, that diamond bracelet. You didn't take that seriously, did you? Well, I certainly did. Oh, that was just a device to show you that you could get on a schedule and enjoy the satisfaction of running the house well. But I did it for the satisfaction of owning a diamond bracelet. <laughs> oh, Joni, be sensible. How could I afford a diamond bracelet? Well, there's the 25% off of being a judge. Oh, crap. I'll clutch you. But, Joni... You broke your promise to me, and you're running for re-election. Honest Brad always keeps his promises. Honest Brad. Why did you ever get a name like that? You probably stole it. Now, look, we haven't got time for arguing. We both have to get dressed. What for? The big political dinner at the women's club. And don't forget, I'm bringing the Andersons back here for some coffee. Oh, I was so excited about the bracelet, I forgot. Well, I'm not going. They are very important people and want to meet you. I'm not going. I'm mad at you. All right, then don't. You better have things ready when I get back here with the Andersons. <laughs> How do you like that, Betty? He gets me to keep the place neat as a pin on a phony Thomas. I I'm so mad at that Brad Fair. <laughs> Take it easy. You'll never change his mind. And if Brad's bringing company back, Betty, you better clean that mess up. You yeah, suppose I better get the vacuum? <laughs> Wait a minute. Hmm? He got me to be a neat little housekeeper on a dirty trick. <laughs> well, we'll show him. We. <laughs> Come on, uh, you and I have got a little work to do. <laughs> I'm certainly looking forward to meeting your wife, Judge Stevens. It's too bad she couldn't have been with us. Well, she wanted to stay at home and tidy things up. She's uh, so meticulous about the house. Uh, I know. My wife is exactly the same way. Oh, George. <laughs> well, you are, my dear. Oh, well. Oh, here we are. <laughs> sure. Uh, it's never like this. Well, of course not. As soon as I knew he was bringing company, all my tidied up to play. Uh, yes, this is uh, Joan, my wife, Mrs. Stevens. This is uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Anderson. How do you do? Nice meeting you. So nice of you to visit us. Uh, won't you sit down, uh, Mr. Anderson? <laughs> Mrs. Anderson? <laughs> oh, oh, isn't that terrible? People are never putting things back where they belong. This is where we keep it. There's no possibility. Uh, Joan, uh, Joan, will you please excuse me? Mr. Anderson, I'd like to speak. Joan, 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 will you come here with me, will you? Will you help me? Joan. You look stunning, dearie. Joan, what are you trying to pull? Nothing. I kept the house clean as a pin for six months on the promise of a diamond bracelet. No diamond bracelet. We'll clean up. Joan, if you just... Please, I don't want to hear any more excuses. Joan, wait, will you? <laughs> well, uh, uh, Joan is, uh, is really a fine housekeeper. She, oh, she yes, really I, is. I can't stand the sight of dirty dishes lying around. <laughs> and actually, Joan is a, is a lady, too. <laughs> <laughs> this is Betty, my next-door neighbor. Uh, Betty, I want you to meet the Andersons. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Anderson. Hi, Anderson. Hey, Joni, what's keeping you? The girls are all waiting in my house, dearie. The girls? Yes, our lady sewing circle. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Poker. Hey, Joan, the bill will all be gone. Betty. Did I say something? Well, hustle it up, huh, dearie? See you around. Catch you on the late shift. Gotcha. Mildred, I think we had better go. Must you? If you don't mind, my hat is in there. In where? In there. Oh. Yeah. Well, oh, why didn't you say you were hungry? Would you like some butter for that? <laughs> oh, I'm a Look, I'll just uh, clean this up in the kitchen for you. But it's my new hat. Just a little water. I think we are. <laughs> Mrs. Stevens, do you know Myrtle Adams? Know her? She and I shoot pool every Saturday night. <laughs> a very good friend of mine, too. 
And she speaks of you quite often. She does? Yes, she told me what a charming house you have and what a wonderful <laughs> housekeeper you are. So tell me, as one gal to another, what's going on here? <laughs> Tell you the truth, I'm doing this to teach my husband a lesson. Well, I'm always in favor of teaching a husband a lesson, but I don't quite get this. Well, you see, Brad promised me a diamond bracelet if I kept the house perfectly for six months. I did. He didn't. Oh, I see. And that's why you're doing all this. Say, that's wonderful. I'm all for it. Oh, oh. <laughs> you, Mrs. Anderson. And that's why she's doing it, Mr. Anderson. She's really a fine housekeeper. Trying to teach you a lesson, eh? Mm, that's it. Well, don't give in to her, my boy. Believe me, I speak from bitter experience. But she's making me feel like such a fool. Yeah. Wait a minute. I think I know how we can swing this right back at her. Yeah? Now listen. You can say that again, Mrs. Anderson. <laughs> oh, I think the men are coming. Oh. Well, here we are. Good afternoon. Well, if you don't mind, a woman's work is never done, you know. Mine. I was just telling Brad, I think I've seen the most perfect little housewife. A woman who isn't always fussing about all the little details in the household. A woman who believes a home should be lived in. A place where anything goes. <laughs> yes, that's how I am. Well, it's too warm in here. Mind if I make myself more comfortable? Say, that's a good idea. I think I will join you. Joey, what are you doing? Oh, now, Mildred. It's a pleasure to be in an informal house for a change. You know, Mrs. Stevens, I like you. What do you say we get even more? <laughs> George, you never do this at home. Well, you won't let me. Yes, Mrs. Stevens, I like you. And I just love the way you run your house. Well, yes, it's kind of sloppy, but it's a good place to lie around and sort of relax, you know. Oh, honey! Here, here, let me help you with that. There you are. Yeah. Get the peelings on the carpet. Oh, they're on the carpet. Well, I'll take care of that. Yes, I will. Right over here. Here, Mr. Anderson. There you are. Fred, what are you doing? I am tidying up. Joni, you didn't have to go through all that. Oh, go away. No, no, I was wrong. I made a promise. Go away. Well, if you uh, don't want the diamond bracelet I bought you. I don't care what you bought. <laughs> You've got it. Oh. It's got a description on the inside. Yeah, to the most wonderful housekeeper in the whole world. Oh, Brad, I, I'm so ashamed. George, put your shoes on. <laughs> and that goes for you, too, Bradley. Well, well, let me... Oh. <laughs> and uh, pick up those potato skins, darling. The Take the things down off of the line, George. Fold them up, put them uh, on the chair. Brad, oh, uh, get no. the vacuum cleaner, honey. It's getting all that dirt. <laughs> if there's anything I can't stand, it's a messy wow. house. <laughs>